Okay, can we start? Okay. So this is the initial screen of Paraview. Everything you open will appear here. You can open either by clicking here or double clicking the file if you already set it to go to Paraview. I'll go through the normal way of doing things. So in here I'll open custom way to pennies. And in ISET you have three files normally for uh, each propagation step. You have GFN, which is the mesh itself. Mm -hmm. And it has information like approximation order, the enrichment functions. And you have this BCs file that only has the Dirichlet bond conditions and non-bond mm -hmm. conditions. And this VTU file, the, this VTU with nothing here. You see nothing written that really has the solution and the stresses, the post processing variables. So let's first see how to open the GFN mesh and look at the boundary conditions. Mm -hmm. So to open a problem, you double click it. It's here, but it's still not applied, so you have to apply for it to appear. Okay, it appeared. You see this thing here. Mm -hmm. And you can choose the angles here. Let's choose. Okay this angle here that I like I normally like X and Y, Z like this because mm -hmm. yes yeah. and you, you have many types of looking at these mesh ways you can look as an outline mm -hmm. you can look at s surface as a surface with edges as a wireframe nice. and this wireframe for the GFN mesh doesn't show the interior you see mm -hmm. But the, the other file with you, it shows the interior. The BC. Yeah, it depends on how the connectivities were generated when it was created. So you s and here, it's all the types of variables that exist in this mesh to be analyzed. Approximation order, in this case, is the only one here. Uh, because I just generated this mesh to look at it. But during the propagation steps, you also have step functions and enrichment and branch functions that you already know from GFM. Right. And okay, we have this. So let's look at the boundary conditions. For that, you open again, and you open this file with BC. Mm -hmm. Click apply. Then you have to generate a glyph on it. Now you're, you're going to go to a thing that is called filters. So you in Paraview, you can apply f many filters in, over a, a file. So if you look at alphabetical, you're going to see some things that make sense. Uh, for instance, plot data. You plot data over a line, plot over a line. Plot on intersection of curves, mm -hmm. then generate a curve and you plot the intersection on what okay. a variable in the intersection of the two curves. Mm -hmm. uh, so shrink, then you shrink every element. There are many things. To, to see the BCs, you just use glyph. And the most common ones you have here. Okay. So glyph you have here. You see glyph, mm -hmm. then glyph. What type of glyph do you want? You want arrow. Do you want to see the displacement BC data? Okay, this is what I want to see. As the Dirichlet bound conditions, let it scale. Let it scale for you, so the arrow is not that big or not that small. Okay. Then you click here to rescale it for you. Thank you. You want to see all the points, not just the uniform spaced. Then you click apply to make this guy not gray. Blue. And you have here. X, mm -hmm. Y, Z constrained, you have Y, Z constrained, you have Z constrained. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty happy with these boundary conditions to take out the rigid body motions. Again, now here, let's change it. Now we want to see the traction data. Okay. I have to scale because these vectors may be different. Mm -hmm. They were different. And I want to see all points. Click doesn't look that good because the arrows as you can see they are inside the domain okay. so to take this out you go here in translate mm -hmm. put minus one and apply again then it looks good looks how it should look no 
Yep. Okay, now you have the experience of how uh, how it looks like to see the GIF and mesh with the boundary conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's see if I already finished one step of the thing. We should have a post two pennies here. Mm. Maybe something went wrong. Ah, it's not running, it's not finished yet. So I'm gonna open another mesh to see the post processing okay. values. I can just click here so those things don't appear. Mm -hmm. You see? So some other mesh that I may have. Um, this one. And we may look at. Is yes, remember you have a G fan that has the mm -hmm. approximation step stains, the BCs with the BCs, and this one with the solution. So let's look at this one with the solution. What problem is this one that I'm showing? Uh, maybe the surface with edges will help. There are three cracks: one here, one here, one here. Mm -hmm. And due to the opening of the middle crack, these two cracks are gonna deviate. Mm -hmm. And due to the opening of these two cracks, this crack is gonna stand still. And what variables do we have here? We have solution, which is displacement, stresses, and vomitus stresses. For solu let's click in then and see what happens. Solution here. Here you have you can show this legend. You can rescale here, but it's already in the correct value. Then you can plot in X, Y, and Z. Or the magnitude, that is the norm. Uh -huh. And oh, I can plot the stress, and stress you have XX, YY, ZZ, so on and so forth, no? Yep. Okay, but we want to see the opening, no? Mm -hmm. So how do we do this? We're gonna warp my mesh by a vector. And which vector is this? The solution. So I click warp by vector. I apply this filter over this file. It has to be clicked here before you click it. And I'm gonna warp here is the warp. He already chose solution because it's the only one with three components. Okay. Stress has six. Yes. And therefore, he doesn't let you click anywhere else. He's that smart. You can scale here. He's already scaled for me for the best thing. And you click apply. And you can see the, the cracks opening. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> but I'm amplifying by 82. The true solution would be one. This looks better. Yeah. Because when you scale too much, it's not small deformation anymore. Mm -hmm. So it, ma it stops making sense. Okay, but I ran many steps. No? How can I see? Oh, you see here, I have max of 100, 120 steps. Mm -hmm. And you're at zero. Yeah, at zero. But I can go to step 30. But these things take a lot of time to process. See this crack very close and this one's deviating. And you can even click here to play and it goes like an animation. But I won't do this because it will be slow. Okay. Or you can go step by step here or you can Is go to... the you slow in this case? Or? And normally it for the big mesh is always slow. Okay. And you can do jump to the last one. Last one, yeah. And here it goes. The other things you... This is zoom extent, this is zoom I forgot, this is zoom over a place, the views, rotate, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now you could do this, but we never look at any s crack files. So let's look at some crack files, okay? okay. The crack files uh, are smaller, the name of them I don't know. 
Every time you see a little arrow here, it means that this is a file with many steps. You can open only one step, mm -hmm. or you can click here and you will load all the steps in one file here. Okay. So what's the difference on the extension, like BTU and BTK? Uh, VTU is, is a newer extension. VTK is legacy stuff that we still have here. And technically it's the same? Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. So, uh, I talked about these three guys here, but in our TCL, we also usually generate some crack files. I'm going to show you later how to do this, but, 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 but. At every step, you're doing post-surface VSTK style, and you choose the name, so it's never going to be the same name. Mm -hmm. And in here, the name I chose was Crack Bottom, Crack Mid, and Crack Top. So we can open the three of them and apply. This an extent. Ah, here you, sh you change for 2D for 3D. If it is 2D and you try to turn, it doesn't turn. Okay. In 3D, it turns. Okay. And this one is small. This one you can click play. Nice. And you can see the cracks propagating. Mm -hmm. Where are the colors? No ID. Yeah, it's whatever. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. It means the node ID, yes. So it's renaming the nodes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I'm remeshing at every step. Mm -hmm. At every step it remeshes and it gives an ID to the node. Uh, oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And we have these, we have these. And probably w to match the results that we have in Caston Way, doing like this, we will look at this VTK's file. Mm -hmm. You should see our two pennies doing like this in mm -hmm. these files. And the true mesh will never really look at it. The what? The VTU, the dot VTU without anything. We don't look at it. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to see something. Something that is in the middle of the mesh that is opening a little. How can you see that? Uh, so we're ha gonna have to trust in what th these guys here it are. Works. And the cracks are nothing more than the VTK format of your CRF. Mm -hmm. Okay, so recap. GFN mesh has approximation space mm -hmm. and you can take a look at the global mesh. BCs has just the BCs and you have to do glyphs to look at the BCs. Mm -hmm. Uh, the post-process mesh uh, is the .vtu, had, which has the solution. Mm -hmm. You can choose the things here mm -hmm. you want from it, and you have to apply the filter warp by vector to see the deformed mesh. To see the crack files, you have to just open the crack files and look at them. You can change surface and surfaces edges here. Nice? Got it. So I'll stop.